What is next for you guys? Moving in together? Wedding? What's up? I think, like, you know, obviously... Babies! <laughs> Hi, hello, and welcome to another brand spanking new episode of another Bachelor podcast. My name's Dylan. I am 3,000 miles away from my good buddy, Real Nicholas Davis. What's going on, everybody? I'm um, also 3,000 miles away from uh, the producer of the show behind my glasses, uh, Patrick Hickey. Hey, how are you, everybody? Good to be here. <clears throat> Pat? Yeah. We got a big show to get into this evening. It's essentially um, a mid-season premiere, which I don't think has ever happened in television. Um, I'm all here for it. But Walking Dead, get into- season three, they broke it up in two parts, and there was a mid-season uh, premiere. It's a pretty common trope, actually. Lately. I don't think we should dwell on it, but yeah. Okay, so do we have any PSAs that we need to get to? Yeah, actually I do, and I will be very brief. Uh, I'm going to hit two fronts here. One, uh, some of you barnacles out there barking a little too much in that iTunes ratings. They're actually birds. They're birds. Oh, birdie. Sorry. Sorry, we do too many goddamn shows. Uh, All right, for the birdie out there that found us through us uh, being a guest on the Kate Casey show, uh, I'm glad that you love us and you found us and you're going to be a little birdie in our our nest. Uh, I I apologize that you're offended of my overuse of the word f***. Uh, too bad for you. Uh, you probably don't want to listen to the rest of this show. All right, that's the first no, piece of business. No, that's really concerning because I completely agree with that, baby birdie. Um, and I think I even voiced my displeasure and uh, creeped out in this of you saying thank you so much last show. All right, well, I'll work on it, but not because of a birdie, all right? I just want to take okay. my stand there. I'm not going to be censored by a birdie. And I think, to be fair, there was just a lot less in this episode. Taisha has yet to be fixed. And Claire was not. I'll find some okay. ways to put it all in there. All right, all right my enough, second, enough, yes, enough. My second piece of business is all you cheapos out there that haven't coughed up the five bucks to pay us for the Patreon money, or just pay us for two years, three years of us doing the show for free. All right, you got to head over to another, uh, sorry, patreon.com slash another podcast network. It's so easy. It takes about five minutes and then you never have to think about it again. This is what we got going on over there. We're going to do a PMZ every single week. Uh, that's where I break, uh, bring in some scoops and some pop culture stuff and Nikki and Dilly uh, crack wise at it. Uh, and then we're also going to be doing season Two of Below Deck. So if you're a Below Deck fan and you want to hear, uh, three rather, sorry, season three. Uh, if you want to hear us two more times a week on top of the other two free podcasts, sign up over at uh, Patreon this week. Thank you. And an yeah, interview. And we're also gonna, oh, there we go. And an interview at a date to be determined with Jordan Kimball. Right. Sure. Which is really exciting. We're also going to be covering a little 90 day. We're popping in and out of that show. There's no way we're fucking watching it two hours every week, but we'll talk about it. So just fear not. Jump on over to patreon.com slash another podcast network. So we've got to break down our general thoughts. And for new listeners, that is where we talk about our thoughts uh, on the show generally. Uh, Pat, why don't you let Nick go first? Oh, good one. I enjoy. What do you mean? Oh, good one. What do you mean? Oh, good. You one. know what I. You know what you, you mean. Nick. I. I enjoyed aspects of this episode, but in, in general, I really noticed them, which they haven't been doing a ton. A ton of filler in this episode. We're getting three-minute preview packages of what's going to happen mm-hmm. in Tasha's season in the middle of Tasha's season. Um, Chris Harrison with a way too long monologue of uh, "do nothing" interrogation of Claire. Uh, so a lot of penalty for that. I'm going to say 62 pedals. Hmm. Seems a little high, Nick. Uh, this wasn't a very good episode. Um, you know, this is kind of like, be careful what you wish for. We couldn't stand Claire. Couldn't wait for her to go. But I got to tell you, the interva- uh, entertainment value on watching this show uh, was diminished greatly by her absence. Tasha is just a wonderful, nice person, delightful, doesn't want to make any waves. And that's what makes her an uninteresting character study on the TV show. Uh, if it keeps going this way, I guess she'll just politely send some gentlemen home uh, and then she'll hook up with one guy, I guess. And it'll end. And Chris Harrison, well, my only enjoyment will be that he will not get to announce in the final episode uh, that this is going to be something that the Bachelor Nation has never seen because it will, in fact, be something that we've seen many times. <laughs> Zero pedals. Woo! Oh, go ahead and spit on the scale again. Um, I could not be more um, 
outraged right now. Uh, one, because of the spinning on the scale, as aforementioned. But um, also, I completely disagree with you, Dimwitz. Mm. Um, <laughs> this is a midseason premiere. It's unlike anything we've ever seen before. Um, we have a, a, a refreshing reprieve from what was a car crash that we couldn't watch for too long. And now we've got an earnest attempt to try and find true love. Tasha is a, a breath of fresh air. Um, we have new villains and we're meeting men that we had no idea <laughs> they were so wonderful because Claire isn't interested in wonderful human beings. She's interested in party city print catalog models. <laughs> 91 pots. How dare you? We begin our evening at the dressed up prison that is La Quinta Resort. <laughs> um, the guys gather around with not a sock in sight and await our new bachelorette, um, the goddess that is. Uh, Bachelor Tasha, she walks in, and we witness a kind of uh, collective cocooning into a uh, caveman from everybody. Mm. Uh, we we often uh, poke fun at the the feigned excitement we see when they go to a run of the mill Vegas hotel, but uh, I think this reaction from the gentleman was was uh, genuine. Uh, Tasha is a showstopper. Uh, she walks yep. in, she was stunning, and they are just really, really excited at this crazy turn of events. Uh, uh, can yeah. I? Say, I'm going to say something that the uh, female audience may not enjoy coming out of my mouth, but I get to say that it was out of my wife's mouth last night as she was watching Tasha come out of the mouth. Okay, so this is not for me. Go. This is a female's perception, okay? So don't attack me. I'm just the messenger. Perspective. My wife okay. said she could have been a little bit thinner, and her theory is <laughs> she would have been, but this was late notice bachelorette so she didn't have time okay. to cut weight I, I just want to put that out there people want to hear okay. what my wife sheree has to say uh are, patrick, are you married to are you married to dolores umbridge patrick uh patrick jesus christ uh often with varying degrees of success hides behind his wife to say some pretty yeah, horrific things. varying varying <laughs> degrees of success it's almost like you can see right through it it's that quarantine 15 I yeah, just made that exactly. up. Um, all right. So Ta I love it. Tasha delivers uh, a toast, which, you know, is watching with uh, my sister and my father, which was actually quite, quite a unique experience. But um, it, it can't be understated that she walks into a room um, with like 10 strange guys who all were here already. This is a very bizarre situation. And she delivers a toast with a Jackie Kennedy type of poise. She absolutely knocks it out of the park. And my favorite part was her saying, I know that many of you have really put yourselves out there. And they immediately cut to a uh, wonder like Jason who had the smashing bottle and screaming at rock state. <laughs> <laughs> so, I do kind of feel bad for him. Uh, though he acted like he was all uncomfortable with it that day. I know smashing bottles is definitely one of his favorite pastimes. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Hey, uh, can I get to yeah. something that she said, which I, I thought was patently insane? Um, uh, before you do, can I just say how crazy it is that he brought up Jackie O when I was just in a room with her nephew today, uh, Bobby, oh, wow. Bobby Kennedy Jr., oh. uh, guest on this past weekend. Look at you. Oh, yeah. wow. I had to throw that in there. Thanks. Kennedy's, go, this, Kennedy's don't come up every episode, and it was just today. It was pretty crazy. Dude, you could have... You could have really pried some info out of him. <laughs> uh, you know, all right. Yes, what she did, she gave a good little speech there, but she said something that was patently insane. She thanked the guys for being there, and she says she knows how it is to be in their position. And I thought, really, Tasha? So you were a contestant on a game show of love where a 39-year-old hair cutter ignored your existence for two weeks so he could get f***ed by your roommate? I don't think <laughs> right. so. <laughs> right. okay. I don't think so. <laughs> oh, no. I hate this hill that he's dying on. <laughs> um, all right. So first up, we've got Ivan. Call me Nostradamus. But uh, is that how you say that? Uh, uh, but th this, <laughs> this stable, career-oriented um, young man had no shot of shining because Claire isn't interested in those adjectives I just used to describe him. She just wants a handsome Party City print catalog model. 
Uh, I you did not have to uh, hurt your arm trying to pat yourself on the back there, Dylan. I was gonna give you props. Very <laughs> prescient. Thank you. Very prescient of you. Ivan is a front runner. He's feeling himself. Uh, this this yeah. show. I didn't think he was as confident as a man, but why would he not be? Like you said, incredible job. Good looking guy and and a sneaky good body. Ivan Ivan's around for the long haul. Mm. Oh, take it easy there, Dick Davis. <laughs> across those guys. Um, all right, oh, okay. medical. Dylan talks about guys' aesthetics more than <laughs> anyone, and the second someone uh, mentions that Ivan's a good-looking, chiseled dude, uh, <laughs> of, yeah, <laughs> of he's hard as a rock. Sport. He's hard as a rock. Okay. Um, all right, medical malpractice defense attorney um, Riley is up next. Uh, not a fan of that line of work, um, but a, a smooth operation here. <laughs> Well, if I'm her, you know, uh, back up the Brinks truck full of the money. I mean, that, that's a pretty uh, lucrative yeah. uh, part of the legal system. Uh, yeah, he's a paid assassin. Uh, I mean, it, it's a really funny thing because she was taken aback. She really liked that job title right mm-hmm. when he said it. But if you think about what he said, he sues people. And he ruins their life. He puts them through hell, and then he siphons off some of that money. Uh, he, it's not a good. It's not a good uh, line of work. I wonder if in his town he's running those commercials like during the day with all the losers that are jobless at home. Hey, did you fall down drunk at work? Did you hurt yourself? Call one eight hundred. We'll we'll uh, shake some money out of them. Are you now addicted to opiates because of an unnecessary back surgery? Like half this country. God damn uh, it. I, I, now, I think that you guys are, are misconstruing the title a little bit, and I don't want to dwell on this because I have a tome of notes for this episode, but um, he is a medical malpractice defense attorney, so he's not uh-huh. actually the uh, Better Call Saul guy. Uh, he is a legal splinter cell for one of the most corrupt industries in the country. He is... <laughs> He's in some shady work there, but, uh, you know, he's a good guy. And we'll talk about him and Spencer later. I'm, I'm a huge fan of Riley. I don't know um, if I right. mentioned, but I was in a room with Bobby Kennedy Jr. today. And he okay. could, his, his entire crusade is about the evilness that is the pharmaceutical industry. Mm. Yeah. So. Yep. How, is, how is Pfizer allowed to do the things that they do? You know, why can't we negotiate with drug companies? You know, and, why can't we? And now, uh, just to warn you guys, I am uh, obligated to mention him a third time, or else it will not be funny. It's the rule of three. We're going to have to sneak him in again. <laughs> All right, I'm looking forward to it. So <laughs> I feel like collectively the group is breathing a sigh of relief um, well, now t- that. Well, yeah. the, uh, is giving them some attention. Sure. Uh, and she's being very, giving a lot of positive reinforcement, which is refreshing, telling all of them that they're good looking, which I appreciate the sentiment, but she's obviously fucking lying. <laughs> um, she's just, I, look, this is proof in point. The next guy up is Urkel, and uh, she, he tells her he likes her big ass eyes. <laughs> and she did not balk at that. She did not bat an eyelash. Like, what do you mean by that, idiot? I, I, yeah. she's, she's going to do her best not to be offensive to anybody. And once again, I hate to sound like a broken record, which will be her undoing as far as quality of uh, the no, show. No, no, listen. She's got a Jackie O type poise. I'm here for it. Um, Blake, the uh, mirror loving Wolverine, says something about him needing patience from her. Um, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> shut your mouth. You're annoying. What a weird way um, to sneak in that you're an unlikable person and give a bad right. first impression. I, uh, he continues with a pretty shocking um, string of bullshit here. He says that they've been there for eight days, which got me thinking. I did a little math, and that means that Claire and Dale got engaged in eight days. <laughs> that is correct, Dylan, but I will say this. Your math is a little off. He's referring to eight days without the show happening. Remember, they went on a boat. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. God. Sorry for those little boring details, but some of the birdies, they know of this stuff and they're screaming at their. No, uh, it's OK. And listen, like like Nick bringing up uh, Bobby Kennedy, you'd have to shit on my point for a third time tonight. Otherwise, it's not going to be funny. <laughs> Though that was funny that you did it. I'm not counting that as my third still to come, everybody. Uh, OK, um, so at this point, I have written who's the guy in the turtleneck, because tonight a star is born. Mm-hmm. And I don't think that this is going to end you know, with a man hanging in a garage with its dog barking outside. I think that this is really going to end in love, but we'll get there later in the evening. Um, 
I, I don't know where this hot ass bitch has been. I was getting lost in his curls and then shit face walks in and says, Mickey still has my daughters. He told me to tell you that everything is about to change. <laughs> Uh, and, and so begins the birth of one of the worst bits I've ever seen on this show. The, what is that? The, uh, Chris Harrison keeping in, interrupting Brendan on his date with Tasha. He was. Oh in, no no no! Oh well, yeah, I guess. I mean, the, this, no, this that was that's why the they did it. Work. That's why they did it because he was finally vibing with Tasha, and then all oh of a sudden Chris Harrison gosh. popped in. Call this, him Poodle Hair. This was the birth of that bit, and uh, that it did not bit land. Was so so weak and without any structure whatsoever that and, I did not even realize. <laughs> I promise <laughs> that you, that's what they were doing. Um, no, it makes perfect sense. So, anyways, a new limo arrives. Um, this is the best season of The Bachelorette of all time. I, I mean, it's just unbelievable. We get we get new guys coming in. Let me just update the uh, the number of the dudes. So we have 16 guys currently, four more brought in. Therefore, we have 20. In a typical season, Tasha, if this, you know, the big C hadn't broken all our lives and our spirits, uh, Tasha would have gotten 30 guys. But right now we got um, 20. I think the big C has already been taken, but I see what you're talking about. Um, but I love this move from production. Um, they could just keep the same number, but speed this along. But they know that they're going to bring in some new meat. Some new meat is going to, you know, butt heads with old meat. We got, we got a bunch of Rams, um, you know, not shaking hands and not wondering how they got hand. They're just slamming into each other. Um, it is more typical behavior out of your Ram. Uh, I mean, when you see him yeah. shaking hands, uh, yeah. consider yourself lucky. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so anyways, curls walks in and says, um, I just saw a limo. It looks like it's full of guys. Take it easy. X-ray. There's only four in there, so let's break them down. <laughs> ah. uh, okay, so, so um, anyways, so Spencer steps up first. Uh, how did this guy not make the first cut? Dylan, I love that first take of yours. So a, a lot of people that understand Bachelor Nation, they always have – some safety people uh, waiting in case someone falls out at the last minute. And it's usually about four guys. Why right. leave uh, Spencer in the on deck position? I mean, this guy sure. should have been in the original 20. Jesus Christ. Yeah. I'm looking around and I'm looking at Luca Brazzi and I'm looking at Wonderlick <laughs> and I'm just wondering, <laughs> you made the cut? Spencer didn't make the cut? Uh, Dylan, I <laughs> did not know what the fuck you were talking about with ed and luca brazzi yeah. i was like who yeah. is, i saw ed tonight oh my, oh my god. god he's it's such unbelievable he's such a weird gremlin luca brazzi looking guy well luca brazzi is oh, a different character so luca brazzi looks like he he would have been in the film goodfellas or any mafia movie perhaps an episode of the sopranos i mean jesus it's 2020 what's with that hair you weirdo is luca brazzi not <laughs> ed no, Luca Brazzi definitely is that. I don't know yeah. what oh. the fuck Pat was talking <laughs> I, about. I actually, anyway, I just refer out. to him as I, I have my notes. Just the guy that didn't make the Sopranos. Either way, soon enough he'll be he'll be sleeping with the fishes. Sure, I'm sure he's a sweet guy. I'm sure he's a family man. I'm sure he loves cannolis. Uh, did you guys catch the uh, occupation of Spencer there? I, I, it's uh, his uh, occupation is uh, listed water treatment engineer. That's pretty niche okay. occup occupation. It's like, uh, hi, well, I'm Ted. It, I'm uh, I'm the second assistant lizard gynecologist at the zoo. How many of those guys are running around? <laughs> it could be a euphemism for somebody who treats sewage, or he could just be installing like alkaline water in people's houses. <laughs> I just, I don't. I don't get engineer from this guy. I get commission salesman from I, this guy. I love it. Both occupations, by the way, we're not saying he's a filthy, yucky, normie. Those are very, could be No, possibly. no, no, I am. Oh, right. Sorry. <laughs> um, okay, so Montel is up next. We do not get a great hug. Uh, Peter is up next. Uh, once again, not a great hug. Looks very, very big. I don't have a ton on these two. I don't either. Peter's a real estate agent. Uh, Montel's a, gy a gym owner, and that's always bad news, just my opinion. But you own a gym, you probably, in not all cases, but I dare I say in most, uh, that means you are the hen of the house and you're probably banging a lot of the clientele or uh, some of your uh, <laughs> employees. I'm just saying. Okay, great. And here I was thinking we should probably just skip past those two. 
Hey, can I say something uh, like a, a meanwhile here? Uh, Kenny, the yeah. boy band manager, he's looking out the window at this time, and uh, he, he thinks uh, Spencer's hot. Uh, maybe he'll sign him to a, a contract and bang him. <laughs> like Lou, uh, hey, I remember Lou Pinella? Uh, is that the guy, who, uh, the old fat white guy that signed in sync in, uh, in Backstreet Boys? That's how that business works. Uh, Lou I think it's Pinella. Ron Perlman. Lou, yeah. Lou Perlman, sorry. Lou, Lou Perlman. Right, yeah, right, yeah. right, right. Lou Pinella, I believe, uh, was the manager of the Florida Marlins yeah. when they won the 1998 World Series. Uh, Dontrell Willis and his high leg kick. Uh, but um, <laughs> neither here nor there. Oh really? You think so? <laughs> uh, he said Lupinella. I didn't say Lupinella. Um, um, hey, when when uh, Pat said that uh, did that bit about how he should uh, sign Spencer and bang him, um, I heard the veins again. Did he look like a four year old who shit his pants? Oh, he did. He oh. did have that look on his face. Thank you. He loved Thanks. it. Uh, but uh, Kenny would only sign Spencer if Spencer is covering Tom Petty songs. Uh, right. Yeah. Exactly. Right. right. Exactly. He has to, um, he's only got a spot open in the Yacht Rock cover band, the Ron Burgundies, but anything <laughs> else, it's, it's pretty much filled up. Um, so, uh, Brooks Kepka slash Jordan, that's a fucking white claw. I can hear it from 3,000 miles away. Uh, Brooks Kepka and a Jordan Kimball type uh, steps up next. Uh, his name is Noah. He is a traveling nurse, um, pulls out a stethoscope, puts it to her heart. Uh, pulls it to his heart. She says it's beating fast, and he just stares at her. Use words, nurse. Use words. <laughs> I have something to say about this, and I never really thought about it because you know I basically label everybody a narcissist that wants to be on TV. Um, sure. And, and uh, a lot of a lot of occupations are suspect. Real estate agents, I think, are probably pretty manipulative people. Things like that. I mean, don't hate hate on me if there's any bar, uh, birdies out there that uh, work in the real estate game. Yeah, nursing, we're not talking about you. Nursing is one occupation where I have to say, these are people that are selfless and care about other people. Uh, I probably can't find anything bad to say about uh, Noah the nurse, but uh, you know, I, I can't help myself. That mustache is ridiculous. Who are you, Burt Reynolds, you idiot? Whew. <laughs> Not gonna be a popular opinion over on this side, but I'm on the other side of it, Pat. I think nurses get way too much credit oh. often. Okay, uh, it, it's it's already. it's often uh, it's often a path just for a secure paycheck, and some of them end up hating uh, their job and hmm. resenting their patients. Uh, wow. And it's just behind teachers for like just some of the biggest whores out there. <laughs> wow. Okay, so anyways, um, uh, more with Spencer. Uh, he cuts in front of these guys and takes her away. Uh, he's clearly there for the w and he is the new blaze he is the new dale he is from san diego and he is fucking awful um <laughs> she should eliminate this guy as soon as she possibly can but he does look like a combination of chris pine and paul walker so there's no way that she's going to but he should be gone immediately isn't it immediately it, isn't it interesting that ben who's barely been on the show but he's a army vet is starts getting very insecure about his chances. Uh, wait, I'm sorry. And Spencer, the water treatment engineer, is a type A alpha. It seems like Ben's kind of intimidated by this guy's confidence. Ben, you were probably being shot at. You did boot camp. You're a tough bastard. You're an army vet. How are you letting this guy uh, eat you up? Jesus Christ. It's the jawline and it's the eyes, you know. It can be a lot more dangerous than a 308 round sometimes, you know, Pat. Dylan's been shooting guns just today. I saw it on his Instagram. Is that right? Mm -hmm. I, did, I didn't shoot any. I don't like guns. Me neither. Okay, so Shitface places uh, the rose on a crystal coaster, and the pressure really ramps up. Um, what's the name of the addiction specialist again? Zach AKA C. Former Zach C. The Toad with a Zach list. Zach C. Okay, take it easy. You are on fire tonight. I hate everybody. <laughs> I know. What is wrong with you? You're much more of an optimist and a pacifist. This is unbelievable. There's so much hatred in your heart. All right, well, Anyways. it's not going to stop there. This okay. the, the toad tells uh, Asia that he had uh, she had him when she said bomb ass summer. Uh oh, really? Hello, old person phraseology. What were you as someone born in the seventies? Bomb. <laughs> Who uses that? 
it's so funny uh pat is so old that he doesn't realize the cyclical nature of these. it's it's back pat right pat. people say yeah. really people saw people that's say what bottom. i was saying yeah. in my late teens that's what happens bell bottoms there's nothing new anymore there's nothing original around anymore everything's just a, a recycled copy of the past mullets short shorts are back for young kids on the playground short short you, the 80s style high shorts that's what's cool man it call it all comes back yeah i remember when the term hyphy was getting thrown around and people and i i learned that uh, my parents were were saying hyphy you know it's a favorite of the boomers and then it went away for a while and then got picked up by millennials that's just how things work yolo um <laughs> you you can you spew all the haterade you want <laughs> but <clears throat> I think because of the lows and the trauma that this guy's has exp- this guy's experienced, he's very grounded. You know, he he's he's very normal to her. Now, addicts are extremely manipulative and they will lie through their teeth. But I think this guy, you know, he just seems like a good guy. And uh, little T, they showed some previews uh, from later in the season, and they did a very poor job of trying to hide who it was that she ends up with in the ends up with in the end through a, a sunny silhouette of him but as pat mentioned his toad like hair is very very easy to spot so you can kind of see it curling up in the sunlight i think that she's going to end up with this guy in the long run i think that my prediction of ivan is just way off i i do i do think you're being duped i think they know that that screenshot it was a split second i rewound we all did we all did i think it's oh, gonna... you, are you calling me a basic bitch are you reusing a term from the 60s you're gonna call me a basic bitch <laughs> yeah you're a basic okay. bitch and um uh and catch me outside how about that another <laughs> okay. 1960s classic but no i was gonna say that um it though even though i think you're being duped if it does end up to be Zach C, then I and actually, actually the Nostradamus, or dare I say Nostradamus, uh, because I said wow. though she should pick Ivan, the aeronautical engineer, she's gonna end up with someone toxic, like a former drug addict. I actually said Kevin, okay. but you know, because <laughs> there right, is, there so- really are no former drug addicts. There's only addicts. <laughs> Yeah, that's a good point. It's a great point, and that's what uh, that's what people in the program would say too. Stay strong. You're fighting this for the rest of your life. And I can't yeah. wait till we get this guy's sob story. You know, we're gonna hear some uh, pretty uh, scary tales of his rock bottom. Yeah. And every time they sit, he sits down with our bachelorette. Oh. I'm I'm on my, on pins and needles. I think we're gonna hear it, but they keep teasing me. Oh. Yeah, we're definitely going to hear a lot about how uh, you can eat food after the expiration date (laughs) from Zach. (laughs) Okay. Um, Brooks Kepka is up next. He belongs to one of these insane families that are trying to make our planet fall straight down out of its gravitational uh, pattern. His mother and father sound like they reproduce at the rate of a fucking clownfish. Um, He may be Mormon, but he is uh, one out of 11 children. Pretty crazy. So you're referring to Noah the nurse. Uh, he has ten siblings. Yes. yes. You know. Yeah. Uh, you know what? That doesn't bother me that much. It means he knows how to get along with people. I don't know. Big families. What? I, I could. What? Be wrong. I could be wrong. Oh, gosh. Hey, who was the who was the uh, the guy that she uh, was playing cornhole with? Do we remember? I think that that I think that was Chasen. Okay. I want. I have something to say about that. So when they're playing cornhole. Um, uh, Tasha reminds him, as if he sh- he would have remembered, that this is what she did on her first night on Colton season, and and uh, and he says, "Oh, I I didn't know that." And then Tasha moves on, which is refreshing, because had Claire heard that from Jason, <laughs> she would have immediately said, "Oh, you don't remember? Why are you here?" It would have been an awkward conf- confrontation, and he would have started flop sweating and been kicked off the show immediately. But if you do say you remember. She would have uh, made, forced you to become engaged with you and quit the show. Uh, there's really yeah. only no middle ground with that lady. No middle ground with Claire. Yeah, I think the only thing that you can do is start an impromptu game of tag 
and just kind of get out of there, you know, but, but keep the conversation going. Maybe, maybe slow up and have her actually tag it, but you got to get out of that situation. Do you guys so, agree with the uh, current internet theory out there that tag stands for touch and go? What are your guys' feelings on that? I don't want to talk about my feelings on that. <laughs> um, anything before the rose is handed out. Absolutely not. Okay. So Spencer gets it. Um, this is perfect for the show. This is going to um, brew some resentment towards him. He will cement himself as the villain. Um, Spencer is, the, is a one night stand that you're lucky if you survive. He should be just hooked up with and sent home immediately. Again, I'll, uh, I'm a broken record, but I do not get a good read on this schmuck. He's a schmuck and I know it. Um, all right. So, oh, I, I should say, uh, gay Superman congratulates him. Which is kind of a nice gesture, right? Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Bennett is the prince of the household. He is always going to bring decorum and a bag full of lies about his Wall Street career with him. Oh, uh, hey, Dill, um, uh, uh, before we move on, uh, I want to say that Tasha does something that's kind of cool here. And I think if I was a bachelor, I would have done the same move. You haven't gotten enough time to know these guys yet. They've only been here for an hour, some of them, you know, the four new guys or whatever. She impro- uh, she does an improv, uh, I'm sorry. She it does an impromptu cancellation of the rose ceremony tonight and says, hey, we're going to continue the cocky party and we're going to have some fun here and get to know each other. I love that move. It was really cool. And if you're really looking to actually get to know people, that's something that a human being uh, with a soul and a heartbeat would in fact do. Uh, kudos to Tasha for doing that. Um, okay, so let's transition to what is, remember, the reason that this show has been so unbelievable up to this point. And that is the curious and very sad case of Claire. Um Pat, do you want to set this up with a little intro from Chris Shitface Harrison? I'd love to. So um, let's just kick this off. Uh, Harrison comes back. So I knew at this point, well, I was a little concerned. Oh, my God. Are we going to do an hour with Claire and Dale on the couch? Are we leaving Tasha's journey for love? And we're going to split this episode. We've only had a half hour, Tasha, And now we're going to go back to Claire. We just got rid of Claire. Uh, and so that I was, uh, like, really uh, concerned. And uh, then Harrison delivers this monologue, setting up the very in-depth interview with Claire and Dale. Hello, Bachelor Nation. I know, this is unexpected. Tasha, our new Bachelorette, just started her journey to find love. You should be watching Tasha's first dates as her love story begins. But we can't do that right now because there's something that needs to be addressed. We need to talk about what was one of the most dramatic turn of events in Bachelorette history. It's what has all of Bachelor Nation, all of social media, and every talk show on fire right now. After only two weeks of dating, our Bachelorette Claire made the dramatic decision to break up with all of her men in order to pursue a relationship with one man and one man only, Dale. Claire followed her heart, and ultimately it was the right decision. She and Dale are in love and happily engaged, but... How they arrived there in two short weeks has left Bachelor Nation with many unanswered questions. Is Claire and Dale's love story too good to be true? Was this really a documented case of love at first sight? Or as many in Bachelor Nation believe, did Claire and Dale have contact before the show started? Did they communicate in any way at all with each other before Dale stepped out of the limo that first night? Well, we're going to get answers to all of these questions tonight when Claire and Dale join me on this stage. And we're going to start with Claire. Claire, come on out and join me. How does he do this with a straight face? How does this shithead deliver this monologue with a straight face? I've, I've, I've put out there the theory that he actually has his personal assistant off camera holding his iPhone open with his Bank of America savings account. Uh, in his uh, purview, just so he can remind himself this is what it's all about, the big money. Uh, this is in the wheelhouse of like Maury Povich doing those maternity tests. Uh, uh, you know what I'm saying? Oh, absolutely. It's that, it's that low level. Uh, I, I mean, and I've often asked, how does Maury Povich look in the mirror every day after taping one of those paternity suit episodes? How does Riley sleep with himself defending all these giant pharmaceutical companies? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Riley? Oh, right. The fuck. Yeah. Exactly. It's it's pretty disgusting. Uh, but I will say uh, it might be the assistant holding the Bank of America, but I'm, uh, uh, 
screenshot yeah, in mean, front of his head. But as Dylan has pointed out, it is yeah. more likely uh, that Mickey's henchman, who has the gun to his daughter's head. So, um, so anyways, she and Shitface sit down for a little catch up. Um, he says, damn, to her ring, um, asks how many channels it gets. And then the red flags start flying. <laughs> <clears throat> she says that she's been looking at at uh, Blaze. I mean, um, she, she says she's been looking at Dale and wondering if she deserves this Party City catalog model. Um, <laughs> she says that she was having random anxiety attacks, uh, one in which she was pacing around the pool in yoga clothes. But the most concerning and telling moment came when Chris asked them a simple question. What is next? What is next for you guys? Moving in together? Wedding? What's up? I think, like, you know, obviously... Babies! <laughs> uh, really, like, we, we talked yeah, about you just, it. Yeah, you just skipped right <laughs> over that. Yeah, you yeah. just skipped right <laughs> over that. No, we, are we having babies first, or are we going to get married first? Yeah, Whatever. we're going to get married first. Whatever uh, happens, we're just happy to, like, start our lives together yeah. and to get to know each other more and more and more. Oh, I now pronounce you engaged. Hey, hey, <laughs> hey kiss your fiancé. <laughs> Oh, you psychopath. Okay. You don't have the power to do that. They got engaged on their own. The state of California <laughs> administered her to a driver's license. That's it. That's scary based on that conversation. I've always thought the requirements for a driver's license are, are far too lax. Uh, you could be a psychopath like her or like 90 and not be able to see. And you're out in the road. It's fucking it's yeah. absurd. Yeah. Uh, and but, I don't give a shit that they're old. I will honk at them and I will flick them off and I will get into a full-on verbal confrontation with them. But I, I'm not an ageist, you know. Dylan, yeah. Uh, Road Rage has no uh, age or sees no age. Uh, yeah. Dylan is an absolute... From what I've heard, I mean, he's gotten in confrontations. His wife is scared. Uh, it, it only takes one time in L.A. till you're dead. Bullet yeah, I've ready. gotten out of my car a couple times. <laughs> Psycho. There, there is so much... <laughs> there's so much to break down here with this conversation. Yes. okay, so... I don't think Dale had any idea what he was getting into when he took those first steps down this road. I don't think that he realizes that if he breaks up with her, he could be, and it's unlikely, but he could be committing involuntary manslaughter because she is going to fucking kill herself. <laughs> All right, I have a few things here, a few things here, and I, I might back up a, a, a little bit because um, there's a lot to mind me from here. Just from that clip, does that sound like a guy very enthused about a, the relationship moving forward? No. Or a guy trying to figure out how to just uh, just move along a little bit until he can get the, hell, get the hell away from her? He needs to get out of the limelight is what he's hoping for so they can have their peaceful breakup. He's like, how do I yes. get on Dancing with the Stars and also yep. not be with her? Is his conundrum right now uh yeah. and tell those dual instagram posts which will be over the amount of words dylan said last time um all right so a few things to break down some of this happened before uh, Deep pull. all right a few things to break down here some of the things happened uh before uh that part of the interview and some a little bit after first thing when uh claire comes out with chris harrison she's basically gloating about the ring that dale got her this always drives me nuts. Claire, you know you watch the damn show. Dale did not put up the money for that that ring. Already you're lying to yourself. You're an insane person. This time, Dale didn't even get to pick choices. Usually they go and they give him like three. They just gave him a ring. Yeah, they go like, Neil, we need the the ring. Hand this to the hair cutter. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, like Mickey Mouse. Yeah, you better do this, you idiot. Uh, yeah, or you're not going to be on Dancing with the Stars and meet uh, uh, Tara Banks. Um, all right, so that's the first thing. Um then I want to get to what I perceive as Harrison being the Pied Piper of lies. But it's not rats that he's getting to follow him. It's Dale's small brain. Here's the clip. Look out for how uh, Harrison leads Dale into essentially saying, oh, you love her, don't you? Hey, hey, I, I heard it. A little birdie told me. He did. She said it. No, she so, told me. So, I mean, did you feel the same? Yeah. Was it love at first sight? I, it was hands down love at first sight. Like, I was just taken back by how beautiful she was. Okay. I know the audience probably heard that as that Chris Harrison say that being posed as a question, but it, it seemed more as a fact 
Harrison was uh, implying there with Dale. He's like, he's just leading him to where he needs Dale to be. Like, almost like fucking Obi-Wan Kenobi with the stormtroopers in, in, uh, in uh, New Hope. He's like, these aren't the droids you're looking for. Hey, oh, that's right. These aren't the droids I'm looking for. You're in love with a 39-year-old hair cutter from Sa- Sacramento where possums live in her yard. I'm in love with a 39-year-old yeah. hair cutter from Sac where possums live in her yard. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, you know what? Harrison is uh, maybe Obi Wan Kenobi. I, I think I mentioned uh, one of our Patreon properties, but it's it's kind of the same interview style that Howard Stern does. He doesn't ask questions. He says leading facts about what's going on, right. and you can either vehemently disagree, which comes off as aggressive, or you somehow massage to say what the the king here just said was true. Right. Of course, it was love at first sight. I want to meet Tyra. I think Pat called her Tara. He did. Um, anyways, he did. I almost, um, I almost wanted to say I want to meet Tara, but I, people wouldn't get it. Uh, so there is the uh, direct message talk. Uh, they lied to Bachelor Nation <laughs> once again. I think that she says that she didn't talk to him at all, and then during quarantine, she like found out that he was really there for her or something like that. I don't know. I didn't care. They are obviously lying. Obviously lying. A hundred percent. And by the way, um, did you notice they're still bonding over being damaged? Dale tells Chris he's always felt like he was left hanging in his life. It's like, dude, uh, from what I can tell, you looked like you lived a pretty good life. Look, I, I wasn't his best friend. Didn't know him personally, but wasn't he a professional football player? He's talked. Uh, his mom's dead. Oh, his mom's dead. His mom's dead. Yeah. When'd she die? Uh, a little while ago. Well, he wasn't <laughs> hanging his whole life. <laughs> okay. So, um, lastly, Claire says that she has always respected the process. <laughs> and, um, this is something that this is something that Chris is not going to fuck up. <laughs> this, is, this is not something that Chris is going to fucking stand for because. His daughters would be at their <laughs> soccer games had Claire respected this process. They wouldn't be in some sick jigsaw type death puzzle, okay? I'm not going to let you say that you respected the process, Claire. Okay, uh, so uh, getting back to Tasha, um, she is uh, journaling. Uh, she shares that in common with uh, Manny McConaughey, uh, who was just on every show in the world to promote his new book, Green Lights. Get it on Amazon. Uh, we're sp- sponsored by the book today. One um, of anyways, the craziest, <laughs> I would say the premier Zoom uh, media tour over quarantine. Yeah. The man did yep. every single yep. show that is out there. It was insane. Yep. And I love him still. Uh, give me yeah, more. Um, Stick him in my uh, veins. Uh, yep, yep, yep. Intravenous, Maddie, please. <laughs> so Shitface walks in. Um, and, you know, he says, let's cut the, let's cut the bullshit, huh? You fucking assholes. Everyone's going to get a date. Uh, let's quit wasting time. And let's get a roll call. Oh, all right. So I don't know these guys that well, but I'm going to tell you who's going on a date. It's basically half the pack. All right, bro, call. Here's who's going. Blake, I'm pr- pretty pretty sure he sells steroids on the side. Riley, uh, he, I don't like him. Uh, Zach C, uh, he's, uh, he looks like a toad. Uh, Jordan, I forget who he is. Uh, Noah, the nurse. Uh, Jay, I forget who he is. Easy. Peter, Kenny, and Spencer, the guy who's probably going to win. I feel like we've got a quite the dossier in some of these fellows. Come Not, on, you know Jay, he's a wimp pussy. You gave him the name wimp pussy. I did? Yeah, you're yeah, like, oh, who I like to call wimp pussy. I don't want to take any blame for the roll call failing this season because I, they haven't spent enough time with the guys. I need more time with the guys. Jason, he's the dumbass who won the wonder, uh, got the worst score on the Wonderlick test. Riley, he's a fake-ass... Uh, uh, the guy who's in uh, The Wire and Remember the Titans... Um, Woody. Avon Barksdale. Yeah, Avon Barksdale. Not so easy now, is it? They look a lot and they squint their eyes a lot the same. You guys see that? Pat, if you come up with that lame, bullshit ass, fake ass, wank ass excuse one more time. The first time was warranted because we had got a lot and that was like the whole joke of the season, but now I feel like I've gotten to know some of these fellas quite a bit. Mm. Um, yeah. 
And just yet, yeah, no more wank ass fucking stank ass excuses. Yeah, no more stank ass wank ass shit, Pat. I mean, I'll, you just can't do it. I'll take my medicine, it. gentlemen, and I promise I will deliver the most epic roll call next week that's ever been delivered. I'm really I just, looking forward to it. And I just want to reiterate one more time, and I'm sure Dylan does too. Please don't bring that weak ass shit in here. This is not. It's, yeah, it's, it's stank. It's weak. It's Look, weak. the yeah. birdies listening right now are probably feeling you guys are going way overboard on this punishment. <laughs> hey. Hey, whatever they think is whatever they think, but but what's important now is what we're thinking. Pat, miss me with the bullshit next week, okay? <laughs> yes! Miss okay. him. All miss right. him with that. So um, we, and that's another phrase that was popular in the 1960s. So we see <laughs> Tasha coming out of the pool um, and her beautiful breasts bouncing up and down for the 700th time. Um, Nikki loves that shot. Loves that shot. Um, speaking of Mickey, his henchman comes out and tells them that it's time for a little fucking splash ball. Now, <laughs> I was disappointed that this was not in deeper waters. Uh, there was no treading. There was no real show of athleticism. Um, but we do get some pretty uh, some pretty intense clawing, jabbing, and punching in the pool there. You guys want to break it down? Uh, well, first off, Adele, you're missing the main uh, headline here. They put all these guys in thongs, once again being objectified. And oh, I was that's thinking, right. I that's am right. so glad Yosef isn't on this date, but still able to be offended by the premise despite not being involved. I would love yeah. to get a phone in from Yosef just to hear how oh appalled, my God. how fucking wretched this was. What, what were some of the I, other words he was using? I would relish talking to that nutbag from afar. I definitely don't want him in studio because um, I definitely don't want him in studio. But man, would we rip him a new asshole from afar. Um, Little strategic, and, and, another podcast network talk right here. We need to, if there's a reality TV show that pops off, that's on a network that doesn't have the, the stranglehold that Mickey does, we, that's the one we have to attack because they'll be more accessible. But there's no way we can get Yosef with the ironclad contracts that Mickey has. Yeah, and we, we don't want any of our family uh, or our loved ones threatened uh, by the, the empire that is the thugs of Mickey Mouse. Um, so anyways... Uh, we've got the Spencer and Riley uh, hit to the face. Um, the only thing I was worried about was don't make Spencer a victim. Don't make Spencer a victim. He's going to get way more sympathy currency that he than he deserves. I didn't want to see that. But listen, he's he's going to be gone soon. He's a pretty face, but he's such a scumbag. He's so toxic. It's oozing out of all of his pores. Uh, I'm and, not too worried about this. Guy. And your mouth is uh, one of the fastest healing parts on your body. Yep. Is yep, that right? Exactly. Yeah, besides your tongue. Oh, yeah. Yep. Um, so anyways, uh, what I will say is that I was really disappointed in Kenny. Um, it was 3-2 with 10 seconds left. This is, um, you know, these are the championship rounds. And Kenny absolutely fucking blows it. Um, he's got an easy route to the basket. He didn't attack it with any ferocity whatsoever. Um, he attacked the basket like he attacks tour booking for the Ron Burgundies. You know what I mean? Like it was just <laughs> piss poor and it was fucking lazy. I can't agree enough. Uh, some of the mismanagement uh, down the stretch in that pool basketball game. And the fact that one person didn't stuff it. I want to see a dunk in a pool basketball game. Put it in their fucking face. Like, it was just, it was just some, uh, it was like Pat. It was some weak ass, stank ass oh, shit. Oh, come on now. I'm yeah, sorry yeah, to keep exactly. harping on it, but yeah. God, yeah. don't bring that weak ass shit in here. Yeah. Um, so, anyways, meanwhile, the, uh, oh, sorry, meanwhile. Meanwhile. Wonderlick tells Joe, who is <laughs> still on the show, if you were wondering, uh, that he may not be here for Tasha. And I was so thrilled to hear that because, like I said last week, we should not be exploiting the mental inadequacies of this man on national television. It's just not appropriate and it's not ethical. Uh I, I heard actually today from Robert Kennedy Jr. Oh. Uh, that uh, <laughs> back in the 1960s, 
autism used to affect only one in 30,000 children, and now it's like <laughs> one in 30. I'm butchering those numbers, but the fact that we're, it can't be that high. Uh, it just the, can't be that it's, high. It's, it's insanely high, uh, but I actually think it has more to do with uh, overdiagnoses than vaccines, but neither here nor there. Uh, sure. The point is we shouldn't be exploiting Jason on television. <laughs> No, we should not. Um, Brendan, the commercial roofer, gets the one-on-one. Can we get to the nighttime? Night date! Um, was the grand prize of hot dogs and hamburgers not shown? <laughs> That's what How was they promised. they not show that? I know. <laughs> they should have made uh, Riley at home and uh, served up some fried bologna. We'll get to that in one second. Um, easy is up first. Is there anything at all here? This was the most boring rose winning conversation i've ever seen just there's this move that i've pulled before where you tell the girl like you make me so excited uh mike johnson big smile mike Mm -hmm. he he said oh you make my cheeks hurt uh easy said you make me feel giddy and it's just so transparent uh because you have nothing else to say so you just tell them oh oh like i'm losing control It, it, it was it was hack uh, I, can I do just a rundown of a couple interactions here? Uh, sure. Uh, uh, we got Zach C., uh, uh, the toad. He makes out with her, which is crazy. Uh, we got Urkel. Uh, he says uh, he's going to be putting himself out there more, and that makes Tasha happy. Uh, we got uh, Riley uh, talking to her, and we learned that uh, Tasha wants to have five children. And I was thinking, better get started, girlfriend. Uh, the boy band manager uh, tell, uh, meanwhile tells uh, Spencer uh, that he's a, a jerk. And then another meanwhile, Poodlehead uh, uh, Brendan gets the one-on-one date, which is uh, coming up tomorrow. Okay, so um, I want to zero in on uh, addiction specialist and former addict's interaction with her. Um, she asks him why he's still single, and I thought that this was a good move on him. He doesn't cite the fact that he was at one point thinking about getting rid of organs for drugs. Um, <laughs> instead, he went with, um, I just haven't found the right one yet, which I thought was a good move. <laughs> yeah, definitely. More, uh, le- less history, uh, more mystery. Mm-hmm. I, yes, exactly. I, I truly believe we're not seeing the full interactions uh, that Zach is having. I'm pretty sure in every conversation, conversation he has it's somehow brought up the the scary stuff he did including which i forgot even though i was the one that introduced it that he almost sold an organ for drugs (laughs) which is just absolutely insane uh but yeah i like because i talked i talked about it he was talking to claire and they cut back and claire was like i think just like being with someone else is my drug. Like he, they cut out 40 minutes of him talking about rock bottom. Yeah. And I think they did it here too, but we will get some sad stories. I know it. I know it. I'm yeah, excited. Yeah. You can cut around the mold, you know, if you're hungry enough. Cause I mean, I, on the third telling he's, it's probably only get, get, going to get better. Yeah. Um, okay. So this isn't, I want to just be sincere for a second. Tasha talking to these guys is the purest version of this show. She's open to all of them. She's kind to all of them. She's, of course, trying to increase her place in the beauty and lifestyle industry. <laughs> but she is she's open to falling in love with these guys. And it just warms my heart. I'm such a huge fan. Dare I say Stan, that old 1960s term of Tasha. My uh, new segment, Dylan, I'm going to have to uh, uh, conflict with you here, but again, this is not coming from me. Hence the new segment. It's called my wife is a judgy bitch. I was saying the (laughs) same thing, laying next to her in bed, watching the show and going, what a delight this Tasha person is. Wow. How wonderful. She's nice. She's like, she is a fake bitch. I was like, really, Sheree? She's like, oh, yeah, she is so fake. My, my wife's got a pretty good judge of character. This is TV Tasha, okay? This is not how she really thinks. She, This is all about her, all this being nice and giving the guys compliments and making it feel comfortable. It's just so that she can get through this season and get a, a, you know two more million uh, Instagram followers and a possible uh, TV hosting gig or maybe a job on MTV Two hosting one of those uh, teen uh, shows, you know, about catfishing and stuff. A couple yeah, things, yeah. couple things that you just mentioned. I do want to hear Cece, Dylan's wife's uh, opinion on Tasha because uh, my girlfriend Jules also she only watched tonight. 
she fucking hated Tasha. I didn't even dare. Wow. I didn't even dare utter that I was a fan of her. Uh, and I think she's super, super, super hot and bubbly and awesome. Right. She fucking hated Tasha, and she's like, she's got fucking sparkly smackers lips. So C- does, does Cece like her? I should say that I and my wife both adore Tasha. Call us naive. But we're along for this ride, and our hearts are in it. Um, okay, so is there anything else, or can we get to Spencer Steppen to Riley, who is from Detroit? Let's get there. Is this the uh, fried bologna uh, 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 incident? Yes. Yes. Please do. So Riley, who, again, is from Detroit, says, Spencer, I think I owe you for my cracked ribs. And Spencer, the five foot nine alpha, responds to Riley by saying that there is more where that came from. Uh, this is not a good move because, once again, um, Riley's from Detroit. He grew up on fried bologna sandwiches. You are from La Jolla and have been bought surfboards your entire life. So, Spencer, just look out, buddy. You're going to get the shit beat out of you. If I was Spencer's assistant uh, or, or uh, advisor, I would have said, Spencer, tell him he's a bitch. Uh, he's not going to do a goddamn thing because he is a personal injury attorney and he knows civil litigation. He's not going to take a swing at you. He knows he's going to lose his goddamn house, possibly his firm. So you can basically tell this guy whatever you want. Plus with all the cameras there, ain't nothing happening here with this Riley character. Here's my defense if I'm Riley. This guy steps me, even though I didn't think he stepped to him, I think he got punked and he was fucking scared. You call me fucking lunch meat uh yeah he he backed down but if he does in fact step to riley i think riley could punch him in the fucking face and then have because he's so savvy he could be like bachelor production it was in this uh kerosene on a tense situation they wanted us to fight i was encouraged to get in confrontation Hmm. and i think uh he keeps his firm and he still gets to punch spencer in the fucking face well, that's not how the legal system works, Nikki. If you're a good defense lawyer, I think it is. That's how people get marred in litigation for open and shut cases. If he's good at what he does, he works for the pharmaceutical industry, which is indefensible, but yet they win, Pat. We all want to see it. We all want to see it happen. Um, okay, so I'm not a big fan of Kenny, but I love that he says, um, in layman's terms, you come off as kind of a fucking dick. Um this is when the guys kind of wage war on him, but it's fine because Spencer's all gas, no brakes, which is fitting because he, again, he looks like a lot like the uh, pedophile Paul Walker makes a little Chris Pine. Um, so I think that was, is, a, um, I think, I think that was a shout out to uh, all gas, no brakes. Uh, I think so too. Yeah. He, he's, uh, he's stuck in the YouTube algorithm, I think. Um, so anyways, um, can I do a meanwhile? Meanwhile, by the pool, Jason convenes a, uh, NNA meeting, uh, and, uh, says while crying, he can't get there with Tasha. And after much support from, um, Zach C, uh, he feels the need to uh, knock on Tasha's door tonight and tell her his heart is with Claire. Uh, and I'm pretty sure at this moment he's either drunk or he just put a needle in his asshole full of vodka and horse tranks. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. So I did want to talk about the, uh, the Wonderlicks depart, uh, depart, Ting. Um, so he's he's leaving the show because he fell in love with Claire, which is hilarious. <laughs> um, but the romance and the bromance on this show exist in hyperbaric time chambers because the care and the support that his brothers have for this stranger <laughs> is, in a word, psychotic. I think it's because they know what this man is capable of. Right. We've been saying yeah. from the beginning yeah. he is a psychopath. And if he is l- left unsupervised, like they have production and security around, this man's going to fly right. off the fucking handle. N- Nick, I love yeah. that. Let me jump off that exact point right there. When he uh, knocks on Tasha's door to basically say, I'm bailing after because of his love of Claire and he just can't get, get to Tasha. She hugs him and she says, he's a real man. And uh, this is what she was worried about. And uh, by that, I think she means that uh, she got set up with a loser who is possibly about to assault her in a roid rage. (laughs) Well, she little did she know she was in an extremely dangerous scenario when she was sitting down to talk with him. But she handles it with a Jackie O type poise once again. I mean, she's a true professional and could save the lives of Chris Shitface Harrison's daughters. But that remains to be seen. Should we get to the next day? Next morning. 
Uh, Brendan prepares for his one-on-one. It is 150 degrees outside. The only thing sweating more than Brendan are those horses. Um, they walk around the grounds of La Quinta, and Mickey is now really getting out of hand. He's <laughs> really making his monkey do a lot of dancing on this 101. On this 101. What? On this one-on-one. Uh, Chris is running all over the place. Um, shame on me that this flew uh, way over my head, that this was a callback, but uh, a, a thin callback I'll, I'll stick to. Um, can I can I uh, release a hot take here? Probably one of my first ones of the season. Maybe I've had a couple. I oh, forget. my God. All right, here's a, here's a hot take. Uh, producers chose uh, Poodlehead Brendan um, on this first one-on-one whatever because he is definitely the weakest guy in the group with the lowest self-esteem to allow Tasha to get comfortable with this whole situation. Remember three weeks before this all happened, she doesn't even know this is going to happen. All of a sudden she's thrust in this with all the coaching up and no, the media training and how to respond to these guys. Cause they do all that stuff before these, cause we've seen these morons after their season. And when they really talk, you're like, Oh my God, that person's a horrible person. Uh, Jake Pavalka being one of them. Uh, so I am 100% convinced that is why Brendan is on this first date. In fact, at some point he admits, uh, during the horse riding thing that he was, uh, shocked, uh, when he heard that he was going to get the first date to which she answers, don't be, I needed a practice run. And if anyone deserved that, it would be you. (laughs) <laughs> now listen i like that hot take a lot but i kind of think that you're you're kind of not missing me with the bullshit and you're coming <laughs> with whack-ass bitch-ass shit right now because i ship these two. Oh, stop it so unbelievably hard hey tash hey brendan can i have my fucking breath back please <laughs> i mean are we watching two people fall in love or what? I couldn't disagree more with you, Patrick. And, and you said earlier, uh, Dylan, that you didn't know who Brennan was. I, before yeah. tonight, did not know this man's name. But let me yep. give you a little background on Brendan. He's 30. He's a commercial roofer from Milford, Massachusetts. He's a sensitive <laughs> soul who's ready to share his life yep. with a special woman. After losing his dad at a young age, he knew that his purpose in life would be to be a father. Would be to be a father. And after relocating to Los Angeles, uh, this is very vague. Brendan decided to move back home to Massachusetts, so he failed yep. uh, to work yep. for the family roofing business and be closer to his family, especially his nieces and nephews, whom he can't get enough of. In his free time, Brendan loves some good true crime, working out, and hanging out with his friends. He's all about that initial attraction when meeting a woman, and he loves to make a woman feel desired and describe his himself as a true romantic uh he can juggle his real passion is coaching his high school's basketball team uh his buddies from home call him b money and his signature look which which he acted like it was the first time he's ever donned one is a turtleneck oh Oh. that explains a lot it explains nothing uh well (laughs) let me just get to this let me just get to this about poodle hair he fucking admits to her while he's talking on that night date. Oh, I should probably go night date. He tells her there are a lot of good looking guys at the house, actually better looking guys than me and probably even smarter guys than me. He said this. And I was thinking at that point, are you inviting a future cuckold video? You pussy. <laughs> what are you, what are you, what are you, what are you, you're trying to get a couple guys to bang Tasha in front of you. Cause that's exactly where this goes. Uh, you, Dylan and Pat could not be more polar opposites on uh, where Brendan stands in Tasha's eyes. Like, D- Dylan's like real contender. You think Pawn used by Mickey Mouse to uh, get yeah. Tasha to feel comfortable mm. with the process. Yeah. It's crazy. And, and it's just, it's it's just you know, it's just kind of weak-ass shit. And, and it, listen, I don't want to end on a negative note. I want to end on a positive note and, and kind of chuckle about the fact that because they are quarantined at La Quinta, they cannot get far enough away to hide the fact that there are fireworks between Tasha <laughs> and Brendan from the other guys. So uh, I'm excited for this trope moving forward that there's just not enough space to uh, <laughs> to insulate the guys from the fact that they're losing the competition. Anyways. Um, a lot to cover tonight. Um, I will be back in studio next week to break down 
the mid-season second episode of The Bachelorette. Um, remember, patreon.com slash another podcast network. We've got PMZ, a new season of Below Deck, if you're into that. We've got Juan Pablo's entire season and the Flight of the Phoenix tier, where for $50,000, we'll fuck each other on camera. Um, also, jump in the iTunes ratings and reviews. Leave five stars and kind words. And if you don't want to leave five stars, just leave one and put your name on it, okay? Don't be a coward. Hi, my name is this. We'll talk about it. Anyways, and- I'm Dylan say goodbye yeah. and follow us on parlor <laughs> oh stop it um, I am Dylan saying goodbye Nick say goodbye goodbye Pat say goodbye bye, bye.